is a world This is a world premiere This is a world premiere I have been through a whole lot Trial tribulation but I know God Hey, Reg here and welcome back to the blog it's day 60 of my 60 day raw food challenge and uh, the return of the fruitarian. So this is it. Um, uh, I feel, you know, I feel great. Um, you know, it's not the first time that I'm embarking on something like this. And I've been predominantly a plant-based person for years now. You know, just to go back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you guys a little bit back um, through, you know, my history, um, uh, I've been someone who's always been, you know, a little, you know, carried a little bit of extra weight, whatever that means. I've not been a lean person, I've not been a naturally lean person, um, throughout my life. And interestingly, one of the ways that that, um, you know, that the ex excess body fat has been manifested itself on me is that I tend to have a lot of extra, you know, chest fat. So it looks like I have like really small, um, like breast. And that's been something that's been really embarrassing for me for, especially, you know, you can imagine being, you know, uh, in high school and like after gym, like taking a shower and the, you know, torture that I went through, um, there. So, you know, I, I, I struggled a lot with you know weight and body image and just and just image in general and on top of that being someone who was queer um, it was pretty I had a pretty difficult you know young adult life youth in general because I, I've known I was queer my entire life so um, so that's been something that's been you know made life challenging um, and uh, you know weight and my relationship with food has has um, reflected that, uh, and it's you know been manifested in disordered eating, and you know we've talked about that. That's not a surprise. So then you know most of my adult life, um, I'm going to say that I've weighed about 225 pounds. That's kind of been my average weight, and I'm I'm six eight. Um, that's not you know really it's not obese, it's the high end of what's considered the, the normal weight for a person my height, although my height doesn't even show up on most charts um, when I check them out. Um, as someone who's been, uh, you know, I'm a performer, I've been, been a performer, and so um, body image has been, you know, something that I've always had to be aware of, especially if I'm in a show and they give me clothes to wear, I have to be able to fit in those clothes. Um, they're not interested in adjusting my clothes because I've decided to put on weight. So I have tended to, you know, just try to present as slimly as possible, you know, just because in the industry it makes one more castable. Anyway, so I want to move this along. Uh, uh, there's a lot that I want to talk about. So um, uh, later on, you know, later in my career, I'd stopped, you know, really performing and was using my arts really um, uh, as part of, you know, youth development and working with young people uh, and doing theater with young people. And um, so I wasn't on stage myself. I wasn't so concerned with my weight and, you know, started to get maybe a little bit more casual about just monitoring um, my size. And then I went through a really rough period, specifically after my mom died, and I, I, hope, I hope it doesn't come off like I'm making a bunch of excuses because none of these things are, you know, were, you know, I, my mother passing away obviously was, you know, really traumatic. Um, but after she died, I put on about 50 pounds. Were those two things connected? Probably. How were they connected? I don't know. So I'm just, just trying to give you guys a, a, a full picture of, of, you know, what's been going on. So now my dog wants to get into the picture. Anyway, Jack, please. Jack, cut it out. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Cut it out. Um, so, so um, then, uh, basically, um, I just made the decision to start running in about 2008, um, and I was in a job that was was extremely stressful, and um, just realized that that job was having a really negative effect on me. It was making me a person that I didn't, you know, I was becoming a person that I didn't want to be in that job. 
But um, I decided to start running, and once I started running, th you know, things started to kind of come together. I also, at the same time, started reading about oppression. <laughs> and for some reason, in my kind of coming to some understanding about, you know, oppression, um, and, you know, the, 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 how uh, oppression is a huge part of capitalism, um, I started uh, just shifting and as that as my attitude about the world started shifting my attitude about myself started shifting um, so then I ended up leaving that job and um, the next time I looked I had you know lost uh, about uh, about 50, 50 pounds um, you know 40 pounds at least I'd gone from being 270 pounds when I you know I weighed myself and to, to suddenly I was, you know, 235 pounds, and I didn't even notice how that had happened. And then I told you guys about, you know, how I, you know, walked and in, moved into a plant-based lifestyle and the whole, like, you know, doing the cleanse and then looking at, um, you know, some films, you know, Fast Food Nation and stuff like that. And so um, I, uh, you know, suddenly I'm plant-based, and very soon after that, um, I had I lost a lot of weight. I suddenly was like, you know, instead of being 225 pounds, which was my average, or even being the 270 pounds, which I'd gotten to, I was like 205 pounds. 210, 210 pounds was the first time like I looked and noticed that I was the lightest that I had ever been in my adult life. And then that slowly went down to, to 205 pounds. And then at my lightest, um, when I was strictly plant-based, I was 197 pounds, and I'll show you pictures. If uh, I found some pictures, and I'll show you some of them. I don't have any really clear body shots, but I think you'll get the picture from just the way my face and neck looks. So then um, I was able to maintain a pretty strict plant-based diet, and then, you know, slowly, for one reason or other, processed foods started slipping back in. I went to Mexico where there wasn't easy access to fresh foods. There were fresh foods, but you couldn't wash them because there wasn't access to, to safe water. So there was a lot, it was really difficult to, to maintain a mostly raw plant-based diet while I was there. Um, and I had some rituals in there where I would have like, uh, you know, galletas, I would have like a, a biscuit here and there. So I wasn't, I wasn't totally plant-based and I was certainly eating processed foods. Um, and then, you know, by, by 2012, my weight had shot up to about 235. I'm talking a lot about weight just because at the time that was how I based, that's what I based things on, how much I weighed. So that's really the only thing that I was measuring, like how much I weighed. So, um, I was 235 pounds and I, and I was really unhappy with that so I decided that I was going to challenge myself and I first did a master cleanse and then I um, did another raw food challenge and following the raw food challenge things were great and then you know there was Hurricane Sandy I told you guys about that earlier there was this hurricane suddenly you know access to the foods that I was um, that I was um, able to eat to maintain a healthy lifestyle those things weren't available so um, things shifted and that shift has been, you know, gradually over the past three years getting worse and worse. And so um, uh, I, I didn't mention that I also purchased a home in Detroit and that I've been financing the renovation of that home out of pocket. So I took another job. So I've been working more. Uh, I've been traveling back and forth. I've been going to Detroit. Every, there's been no consistency. And so, you know, my health, you know, I don't know. Is there a connection between that and my health? Um, taking a turn for the worse, probably. What the connection is, again, I don't know. But um, I got back from Detroit um, and doing things like eating french fries at McDonald's and decided that I was going to do this 60-day raw food challenge. And it's been, you know, it's been great to kind of bring things back into perspective. However, you know, it hasn't changed the fact that I, you know, have all these jobs and that I'm working too much and um, there's still a lot of things, there's still a lot of, uh, still a lot of challenges that I have. Um, however, I do, you know, feel better about myself on one level and that's helped. Um, 
So when this all started, um, again, I wasn't weighing myself, but I did do, uh, I did measure my waist, and I was about uh, 42 inches. My waist was about 42 inches, which is more than I would like it to be. And I think I told you guys that I was going to try to get down to a 36 waist, and I'm at now at about, you know, 36 and three quarters, so not quite there. Um, so, you know, I intend to keep working on that. But, um... If one of the things, so what have I discovered in this? One, as I've discovered is that I'm not even, I'm not even close to being a vegan. I'm not a vegan. <laughs> um, be, and that's mostly because when the vegan society, you know, coined that term back in 1944, they were not talking about veganism being a diet. They weren't even talking about veganism being a lifestyle. Veganism, you know, is a doctrine where, it, you know, where um, it's, it's it's understood that that uh, you know that uh, men should not that human beings uh, should be able to live without the exploitation of animals, and um, if anything, I'm a dietary vegan um, and will likely continue to um, aspire to being a, a dietary vegan. But I have a long way to go before um, I can really understand what what being a vegan is about, and I intend to dedicate um, this channel to pursuing that. So that's what that's one of the things that I'm going to do, and I'll likely be posting like a weekly blog with just some information on the history of veganism, where that thinking really comes from, who some of the founders were, what they were dealing with, and you know, so that people making a decision about becoming a vegan aren't just talking about you know just eating vegetables or whatever that is. So um, that's something that I'd like to do. Um, then the the last thing, what I reaffirmed for myself in all of this is is that it ain't about the food. <laughs> it ain't about the food. It's it, it ain't about the way it's not even it's not even about all the health indicators that I could, you know, know about myself or that I could share with you. Um, it's for me, it's about how am I being fully realized. Um, you know, it's about realizing myself as concretely as possible and um, basically if you think that that's too spiritual or if you think you know that's too hippie-ish it's likely that you don't have a very strong concept of yourself and so welcome to the club <laughs> so um, you know how do we do that how can we have joy without running over each other and running over ourselves and running over the planet. So that's what I want to leave you with. Um, in terms of musical uh, recommendations, I'm going to go back and I'm going to bring um, back Kendrick Lamar's I. I've been kind of using it as my theme song and uh, I just want to leave you with that because I think the message there is, is important. Um, to figure out how to love yourself. Um, how do you do that? I'm going to keep trying. Um, this is Reg checking out on day 60 of my 60-day raw food challenge. I hope it's been fun for you. It's been fun for me. Let's say bye, Jack. Peace. And I love